with the previous five lessons having covered various significant attacks on TLS, we now have a good understanding of security vulnerabilities associated with specific TLS versions and specific ciphers used. And in this lesson, the security vulnerabilities uncovered by the Lockjam, Locky13 and Suite32 attacks are now consolidated into a set of recommendations on which cipher suites to use within which TLS version. Starting with TLS 1.2, we know from a previous lesson that for TLS 1.2, a total of more than 200 cipher suites are defined. As such, what you see here on the left is just a small selection of TLS 1.2 cipher suites that I compiled for the purpose of demonstrating the variety of different types of cipher suites available within TLS 1.2. Nowadays, most of the more than 200 TLS 1.2 cipher suites are considered insecure for one or multiple reasons. Starting with the key exchanges, we know that key exchanges should preferably provide forward secrecy. Forward secrecy is provided by the ephemeral Diffie-Hellman key exchange DHE or the ephemeral elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman key exchange ECDHE. This then rules out cipher suites not providing forward secrecy, which is the case for cipher suites that conduct key exchanges based on RSA encryption or the static Diffie-Hellman key exchange DH or ECDH. The use of a pre-shared key is not explicitly ruled out, however, but in case pre-shared keys are used, then pre-shared keys should be used in conjunction with an ephemeral Diffie-Hellman key exchange to nevertheless achieve forward secrecy on the application data exchanged. Moving now into the authentication of the peers involved in a TLS connection, then generally speaking, the authentication should take place via RSA-based digital signatures or ECDSA. The choice between RSA or ECDSA is then limited by the type of X509 certificates available, as X509 certificates either contain a public RSA key or a public elliptic curve key. The authentication of the peers involved in the TLS connection can also take place via a proof of knowledge of a pre-shared key. If a pre-shared key is used, then it's important to ensure that the pre-shared key contains enough entropy of at least 128 bits and that the pre-shared key was distributed over an otherwise authenticated channel. As no X509 certificates are then involved, a separate mechanism then needs to exist that can revoke a pre-shared key in case the pre-shared key would be assumed to be compromised. Going into the protection of the application data, from Suite32, we have seen that triple DES as a 64-bit block cipher is insecure, and from Locky13, we have seen that the CBC block cipher mode of operation allows for a CBC padding oracle within TLS 1.2. From this, we can conclude that cipher suites using triple DES or the CBC block cipher mode of operation are not recommended to be used anymore. Additionally, support for the RC4 stream cipher has officially been removed by RFC 7465 in the year 2015, so cipher suites using RC4 should not be used anymore either. For the protection of application data, this then leaves us with cipher suites using authenticated encryption with associated data AEAD ciphers, such as AES behind the GCM or CCM block cipher modes of operation, or JOTJO20 poly 1305. Going into the authentication of application data and the cryptographic key derivation with the pseudorandom function PRF, where cryptographic hash functions are required, we need to remember that MD5 and SHA-1 are by now considered insecure hash functions. As such, cipher suites using MD5 or SHA-1 should not be used anymore, but cipher suites using SHA-2 with either 256-bit hash values or 384-bit hash values should be used. Last and very importantly, 
all the recommendations just given or recommendations given considering classic computer powers. Now, very importantly, the computational power of quantum computers poses a significant threat to especially the key exchanges ECDHE and the RSA or ECDSA based digital signatures. As such, and especially looking at key exchanges and digital signatures, for all the algorithms ECDHE, RSA and ECDSA, we need to be aware of the threat posed by quantum computers and need to be aware that especially these algorithms may need to be replaced at one point by appropriate post-quantum cryptography algorithms resistant to the computational power of quantum computers. After this quite lengthy discussion on TLS 1.2 cipher suite recommendations, let's now move on to recommendations on TLS 1.3 cipher suites. The story on security recommendations for TLS 1.3 cipher suites is quite a short story to tell. All the five cipher suites of TLS 1.3 are considered secure, and in case pre shared keys are used, then the same recommendations as the recommendations given for the use of pre shared keys in TLS 1.2 apply. The choice of a TLS 1.3 cipher suite then mostly depends on the availability of a cipher suite in a TLS implementation, the interoperability requirements for the system with its context, and performance requirements. Looking at the availability and interoperability, the GCM block cipher mode based cipher suites seem to be the most widespread cipher suites. On the other hand, the CCM based cipher suites are said to have been added to TLS 1.3 as a backup in case issues would arise with GCM and the CCM cipher suites are then, for example, also not enabled by default within OpenSSL. Let's now look at the performance of these cipher suites. Performance analysis of the cipher suites then indicate that the GCM based cipher suites are the fastest cipher suites on Intel and AMD architectures. For mobile or ARM architectures, performance analysis then indicate that the JOT 20 Poly 1305 cipher suite is fastest. Like with the TLS 1.2 cipher suite recommendations, also, for the TLS 1.3 cipher suite recommendations, it's very important to be aware that quantum computers also pose a threat to the five cipher suites of TLS 1.3. Within TLS 1.3 and bearing pre shared key only connections, all key exchanges involve ECDHE key exchanges and RSA or ECDSA based digital signatures. These algorithms are especially vulnerable to quantum computers and as such, we need to be aware that even if using TLS 1.3, all of the ECTIG, RSA or ECDSA algorithms may need to be replaced at one point by post-quantum cryptography algorithms resistant to the computational power of quantum computers. With this, I close the lesson on TLS cipher suite recommendations and again, can't help but being amazed by the elegancy of the TLS 1.3 protocol and its very thorough cipher suite cleanup.